All right, hi, I'm Professor Juan Serrano. I'm Professor Cliff Seminario. And I'm head instructor John Boone of KempoFit. And of course, we're here to of course uh, thank our partner, uh, John Boone, and student, uh, who is helping us out also with the filming of these uh, techniques. Uh, John Boone has been training a long time with us for about a good six years. Uh, well, more I would say like maybe four years, but prior before that, training out in Canada with uh, Chris Snell and also Michael Bagwell, um, two uh, very well uh, for, uh, trained martial artists in the Art of American Kempo. And of course, seeing the opportunity to be able to come out to the West Coast and get a little bit more basis of the art, that's what Mr. Boone has done. And now he has his own school called uh, Kempo Fitness. Kempo uh, Fit. Kempo Fit, uh, which is located on um, Eagle Rock, California, right by Occidental College, as close to Pasadena as you can be without being in Pasadena. <laughs> I mean, this guy could actually, you know, throw water out of the window and hit Pasadena floor, <laughs> you know? So it's that close. And please, if you guys are in Eagle Rock, come check John out. Come check out the school. There's a lot you guys can definitely learn from him, uh, from the art. And um, it's just uh, part of the journey, you know, becoming a better person, a better martial artist as well. And just share it. So uh, I hope that you guys uh, learn a lot of the techniques that we were doing before in terms of yellow, orange, purple, blue, and now green belt, of course, what's happening is we're taking it just a little bit of a pace a step ahead, okay? Learning the fundamentals that we did in orange and yellow, putting them together with the coordination within our purple belt, learning the proper fluidity with what we did in our blue belt. Now green belt is actually asking us to apply the speed that is induced behind this. So when you're learning the techniques, it doesn't mean that you can't do blue belt fast or purple belt fast, but you know, it's always good to break the technique or the art and the base of the system in different aspects in terms of stances or coordination or fluidities. This way you're building it up and little by little you're nurturing and, and, and neutralizing all those good fundamentals that you're learning about the art. Okay, so when you're doing the green belt techniques, don't just do them in speed, I'm not just trying to say that, but now apply your basic fundamentals in there. Have the coordination with it, have the fluidity, so this way the speed is not going to be something you're going to look for, it's just going to be there. Okay, and then of course we we'll look forward to you when we we'll see brown belt when we start working on the power. Hey guys, welcome back. This technique is called Taming the Mace. Again, it's against the overhead right. And this time, what kind of makes this unique for a couple of reasons, your back is against the wall like on Conquering Shield, so you can't step back. And what you're going to do is you're going to utilize the wall uh, as a weapon against your opponents. It's a really neat technique, and I actually did this technique, I think, junior year in high school on a Taekwondo guy at school. Don't try it at home, kids. Okay? My back is against the wall. I cannot step back. I can move laterally, but what I want to do is I want to move laterally and forward so, I can, so I'm not hit against this bad boy here. As it is the overhead right, I slip it, I parry with my left, and I'm going to do an inward hand sword to his bicep. Okay? I'm sandwiching effect. One, I ricochet my right hand, quarter beat it right into the back of his, uh, back of his uh, jaw, behind his ear. One, two. Okay? So as I step, I like to use the closed heel to, to, to close off this line of entry to my groin. Okay? So I go one, two, one, two, okay? From here I grab, I like to grab behind the, behind the shoulder and anchor down here. Reason I do this is I want to weight this foot, okay? I want that foot to be weight because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rear cross against the wall, okay? Use that foot as a pivot point and swing him into the wall, okay? As I do that, I'm gonna do right knee with my right elbow. Crossing out. Try again. Up the clock, slip it. Hit here. One, two. Okay. Grab. Rear cross. Unwind. Bam. Elbow and knee. Cross. That's what happens. Street speed. of um, Taming the Mace you just saw, just to get a little idea, especially for those of you from New York, what's up, Brooklyn, you like a little more brawl into your technique. Now we're going to do Taming the Mace B. You just seen Taming the Mace A, we'll do Taming the Mace B. Now the interpretation is not nothing new, it's just another form that if you didn't want to expose your back or just turn your back and go that way because you just feel you had enough leverage or control, how to just move from the point of origin and just continue to use your opponent's momentum forward. Anyway, as Cliff comes in, again, same basis, we're going to parry, chop, and recoil the back of the right to the match story. 
At this point, I grab him right behind his neck as an anchor, and I'm going to do a right knee in the inside of his right thigh. Climb back to my point of origin, hold him, and then slam his head right against the wall. From this point here, I knee to the spine, plank back, and take my left hand as I hold him back to the left, do it the right hand, ah. to his ribs, cross out for one, two. Do it again, slowly. <laughs> Tammy the mace, street style. Oh. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Oh. 